Welcome to Drama 1301. Uh, I'm your professor down here in the corner of the screen. Uh, I'm Kelly Schweitzer. Um, what we'll be doing today is going over the syllabus, all of the course information, and familiarizing you with the course. So let's start with the, um, the Blackboard Learn environment itself. So uh, whenever you log into Blackboard Learn and choose our course, it will bring you to a home screen such as this. Um, you'll notice on the left hand side here there are several tabs um, including announcements. So anytime um, I make an announcement, uh, a change to the syllabus, or a reminder that something's due, um, then that will pop up here under the announcements tab. So check this um, pretty frequently. Um, also sometimes the announcements will go push directly to your Gator email. So make sure you're checking your Gator email regularly and you'll get those announcements. Um, the syllabus, which we'll go over in just a moment, email so you can email um, directly to me from your Gator Mail account and remember that you are not supposed to use um, other clients like Hotmail or Gmail um, to uh, email your professors. We're only supposed to communicate with you via Gator Mail because of FERPA um, privacy regulations. Under that you'll see my grades where all the grades you've accumulated throughout the semester are stored. Um, the calendar with all the important dates for the semester. Um, a infor uh, drama infor excuse me, drama area information section which will have information about um, what's going on in the drama area and the arts and humanities department. We'll talk about that more in depth in a second. Play attendances. You have to see two plays for credit this semester, and I'll explain that in a moment when we come to the syllabus. Um, but this is where your play attendance forms are housed, and this is where you will um, download them and then um, submit them for a grade before the end of the semester. Um, this is our first week unit, which is what we're on right now. And in fact, if you click on first week, um, you are working on doing, watching the course orientation. And these are the other items that are due that you're expected to complete um, before the end of the first week. Um, and what, once I'll, once we open the syllabus, I'll point this out. But the um, the course is unitized, so we we work on one unit. We work on the next unit, work on the next unit, and they go from the audience to the playwright to the directors so about different um, um, positions or different areas in the theater. Um, and those units have um, certain deadlines within them, and they all culminate, um, each one of them culminates in their own test. And I'll show you all that in the syllabus in just a moment. Um, this is what we're doing this week in the first week unit. And the next week is the audience unit. I've already opened it so you can get a chance to look at it and see what's coming up uh, uh, and get an idea of what's coming up. Uh, was ahead for you. And then additionally, um, each uh, once we're complete with one unit, the next unit will open up underneath that, so on and so forth throughout the semester. So this will pop up uh, and populate um, as the semester progresses. And that's the reasoning behind that is so that you don't get too far ahead of yourself. Um, so you keep a, a normal pace as if this were a face-to-face -face class. You give yourself enough time with the material. And each unit is about two, sometimes three weeks or so um, worth of information and um, assignments and then, of course, culminating in the test. And then there's a help button here if you have any issues with Blackboard Learn. Okay, so moving right along. Let's go to the syllabus and check it out. So the syllabus here at the top is a PDF. Um, notice that I tell you here when it was uploaded. So anytime I make a change uh, or a slight correction to the syllabus, I will note when I uploaded it. I will make an announcement and I will make it clear what the change is. Uh, I will announce any future changes and update the syllabus accordingly. Um, so let's click on that and open it up. Let me zoom out a little bit since it's kind of looking large here. Um, okay, so this is our Intro to Theater syllabus. Um, a lot of the information uh, about the class is stored in the syllabus, so come back to it throughout the semester if you have questions about due dates um, or grading or um, what we'll be doing in a certain unit. You can go to the syllabus and see all of that in advance with dates attached to it. 
So this is Drama 1301, Introduction to Theater, um, CRN 10290, and this is the Fall 2013 online version of this class. I also teach this course face-to-face um, -face as well. It's very similar um, in structure and information, except obviously they're getting it in a face-to-face -face, um, classroom format, and you're getting this all online. Um, so Introduction to Theater is meant to be a freshman level course, um, and I understand several of you might actually be um, sophomore, junior, or senior level. Maybe you waited to get your um, humanities credit, your fine arts credit out of the way, um, and that's perfectly fine. But a lot of you are probably freshmen, and this might be your first or second um, semester in college. Um, and so because of that, um, this is a very introductory overview of the subject matter. Um, as you can see from the course description below, right here, um, the only prerequisite is taking Reading 1301 or an acceptable reading placement score. So you, you might not have had a English 1301 uh, quite yet, although some of you have. Um, topics examine the five essential elements of theater, the audience, the actor, the script, the production, and the physical theater. So we'll look at all of these five elements um, unit by unit, uh, and we'll look at them as an overview, very broadly, so we don't get too in-depth into any one section. Rather, we have courses in acting, stage and costume design, playwriting, um, we have a course in directing. So these classes, if you wanted to learn more in depth about a certain subject or area, these are the sort of classes you would take. So we're just sort of getting our feet wet. Uh, and then notice attendance at plays required and no acting included, and that'll probably make a few of you uh, relieved. There's no acting, no performance aspect to this particular course. Um, all there is for um, acting class, obviously, acting one, acting two. So it's a, a general overview course, so we get our feet wet. Um, several of you might have never seen a play before, or it's been many, many years, and that's perfectly fine. You might have no theater experience or no knowledge of the theater world, and that's fine as well. Um, that's what I'm here for, is to give you an introduction, um, sort of get you interested, get your feet wet in the world of theater, uh, and hopefully you'll take it from there. Um, maybe enroll in some other theater classes down the line, go see other theater productions, uh, become involved as an audience member, or even behind the scenes or as an actor. Okay, so then my information is below that. Um, I am Kelly Schweitzer, as I mentioned. I have an MFA in theater, a Master of Fine Arts. Um, it's a terminal degree, like a PhD, um, so it's the highest degree you can get if you are a theater pr practitioner, like an actor um, or a designer or a playwright. Um, my area of expertise is scenic and costume design, which you'll discover when we get to that unit. Um, I get very excited because that's what I really know about and love and am passionate about. Um, uh, but uh, we will concentrate not just on that area, but also, as I mentioned, acting, directing, playwriting, um, the audience, theater architecture itself, and then the people that work backstage. So you'll learn a little bit of everything in this course. Um, my office is S1087, so I'm on the 10th floor of the academic, or not the academic, sorry, I'm on the 10th floor of the main building on the south side, that's what the S denotes, so on the side closest to downtown. Um, that's my office phone number, uh, feel free to call it, if I'm not in, you can leave a message, I do check my um, messages rather frequently, so I will get it. Uh, and then my email address there, SweitzerK at UHT.edu. And this is probably the most um, reliable or quickest way to reach me because I check my um, email uh, fairly regularly. In fact, um, now I get my uh, uh, um, work email on my iPhone, so I check that pretty um, religiously. So I will probably get your email um, quickly if you send it um, to my work email, SweitzerK at UHD.edu, and I try to um, uh, respond to emails in a timely manner. Notice there's an asterisk here after my email. If you come back down here, to read the asterisk. It says FERPA regulations require all academic correspondence between teachers and students be carried out through UHD Gator Mail. So don't use your Hotmail or your Gmail or in, uh, any other um, email clients to contact me. Um, check your Gator Mail regularly and use it or Blackboard Learn. Um, and that Blackboard Learn email option uses your Gator Mail um, to contact me with any questions. So do feel free to contact me. If you send me an email from your private account, I'll um, have to send you one back saying I can't discuss this matter over um, private email. Please send me one uh, over Gator Mail. 
Um, so please check your Gator mail periodically, regularly. Keep up with that because that's really the only way I have to correspond with you through emails and announcements. And here are my office hours, which you might have noticed just changed. I had to quickly edit them um, because they were the incorrect office hours from um, last semester. So my office hours are Monday and Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, because I am in class from 10 to 12.45 on those days. Um, and so I have lunch right after that uh, and then uh, office hours from 2 to 3. Now I'm actually in my office a lot more than that. I'll be in and out um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then I usually get here about 9 or so in the morning uh, for sure on Mondays and Wednesday, Wednesday. So if you need to come talk to me, um, please feel free to make an appointment if my office hours um, aren't convenient for you. And I'd be happy to talk to you either in person in my office or you can always call me on the phone or we can communicate and chat via email. Um, so moving down, here I've listed your textbooks for the class. Um, you have two books. One is a textbook, one is actually a play. Uh, script. So the first book is The Theater Experience by Edwin Wilson, the 12th edition. So make sure you're getting the one with the white cover and the movie, or I'm sorry, the theater tickets on the front. Uh, make sure you're getting the 12th edition. The older editions are um, different enough that they moved chapters around, took things out, added things in. Um, it would be very hard to complete this class using the, um, the 11th or the 10th so make sure you're getting the 12th edition. Additionally, if we go back to Blackboard Learn, um, I've given you the image of the text here and then also um, information here. Uh, the ISBN is in the syllabus. And then the second book that we'll be using, the script, is Tennessee Williams' The Glass Menagerie. Uh, and it comes in a variety of different covers. They're basically all the same. And so um, if you get the one that has this cover, then you know you'll have the same pagination, the same pages that I do. Um, so when we're discussing uh, uh, and analyzing the text, it might be a little bit easier for you to keep up. Um, but other texts, uh, um, other versions will be very similar. To this one so you're welcome to get another version um, although it might be easiest if you get this um, both these textbooks are available in the um, bookstore you can also get them from the used bookstore um, close to campus or you can order them online but make sure you get them quickly in the next week or so so you can start completing um, the uh, reading assignments and other assignments like the guided reading which will be coming up due in a couple of weeks here and I'll show you all that on the syllabus in just a second all right, so if you go back to the syllabus, um, I've given you the ISBNs here, so you can go put that in Amazon.com or cheaptextbooks.com or whatever you want to use um, to order them if you would like. If we scroll down even further, we have the course goals. Um, so when you've completed this course by the end of the semester, um, you will develop the knowledge and awareness of the world of theater, which is kind of the point of the course. You'll develop the ability to analyze, evaluate, and communicate about various aspects of theater as an art form. So we'll talk about all of these different aspects, acting, directing, playwriting, producing, uh, stage management, people that work backstage, designers. So you'll be able to talk about um, these different uh, areas of um, theater and also to analyze and evaluate them. Um, you will have developed skills and abilities necessary to reading and understanding a play script, which is what um, Tennessee Williams, The Glass Menagerie, is for. Uh, you will have examined the interrelationship that exists between theater and the society of which it is a part of. We will focus more on Western theater, although we will talk a little bit about other theater forms, Asian forms, kabuki um, theater, uh, things like that in passing. Uh, you will have attended live theater performances, which we'll uh, point out in the syllabus in a second, but you have to see two performances this semester for credit to pass the class. Um, if you are a fine arts major, humanities or interdisciplinary studies major, um, this course will also meet some of your degree goals or degree outcomes as well. And so it will fulfill um, these particular goals or outcomes listed here, and I'll let you read those on your own if they apply to you. Moving right along, activities, what we'll be doing this semester in class. Uh, chapter assignments, um, so you will be reading from Edwin Wilson's textbook, The Theater Experience. Um, I will give you specific pages, 
chapters I want you to read. This is in the syllabus. Um, we will go out of order, so it's not chronological necessarily. We'll skip around a little bit, and we won't cover all of the chapters in the text. There are a couple of chapters we don't get to, um, vice versa. Uh, when we get to people at work backstage, uh, that section, that unit, there's not actually a chapter in the text devoted to it. And so we'll um, spend more of our time looking at PowerPoints and videos um, to sort of fill in the gaps there. Um, make sure you pay attention to any tables, photos, captions. Um, this book is full of lots of interesting um, images. And then occasionally you'll find like a, a table with lots of other information set out in it. So make sure you're not just skipping over those um, tables and those images. Um, read the captions below, it'll tell you a lot about the image and it'll relate back to the material in the textbook. Okay, um, you will have a guided reading assignment for each unit, meaning you'll have to go through and answer a number of questions about the reading just to make sure that you're keeping up and also to help you focus on some key elements, keywords, and ideas that you should really be familiar with for the test. Next we have play reading assignments. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be reading The Glass Menagerie. It's the only play we'll be reading this semester, but we will use it um, to analyze in depth and also then to think about some of the other areas of theater. How would a designer approach this play? How would an actor approach these characters? So we will be using this throughout the semester. You can't not read it and expect to do well, um, so make sure you get a copy and you have it read by the date in the syllabus, which I'll point out in just a moment. Play attendance. Notice the big red star because this is a large portion of your grade. Um, you are expected to see two plays this semester for credit. Um, this is not negotiable. Um, if you're having issues getting out to see these two plays, if you need um, further guidance on what plays might be appropriate, please see me and I'd be happy to help you and accommodate um, your needs. Um, the theater head, uh, Dr. Little, has compiled a list of plays that you can see for free, but on particular days and times. And this is under the Comp Theater Ticket Information on Blackboard Learn. So if we go back to Blackboard Learn and go to Drama Area Information where this can be found, you'll see there's a Fall Complimentary Ticket Information. You can click on that, open up the PDF, and you'll see a list of shows that you can see on certain days and times. Now these shows are usually either at the Alley Theater or at the UH Wortham Theater, so the UH Main Campus Theater. Um, for the UH Campus Theater, um, these shows uh, are not likely to sell out. In fact, they're probably previews, so that the very last technical rehearsal before the audience comes in to see it, so you're getting a sneak preview. Um, these previews um, are free, as I mentioned. Uh, just let them know you're a UHT student and then you and a guest a date, a friend, your ride, um, can get in for free to see it. Now for the Alley Theater, they are a little more in demand, and so these tickets are likely to, um, to go very quickly. So I recommend that you get there early. The box office usually opens about 6 o'clock. Um, get your tickets, let them know you're a UHD student, you can get yourself and um, uh, a friend a free ticket to see the play. Uh, and then maybe you spend the remaining hour, hour and a half going to have dinner or sightseeing around downtown. So if you wait until 7 or 7.30 to get your ticket uh, and the show starts at 8, then um, it's highly likely that it might sell out. And they try to accommodate us as best they can, but these are very popular plays. Uh, and if you want to see any of these plays on the list on a different day or time, you're welcome to do that, but you will have to pay um, for your ticket. Uh, and usually most theaters have a student rate, a student discount as well, so make sure you ask for that whenever you are ordering and reserving your ticket. Now these aren't the only plays that you can see for credit. These are just the ones that he has um, been so kind as to arrange for you to see for free. So if there's another play that you would like to see, um, as long as it is um, college level or above, so relatively professional, um, college level or above, um, then I will accept that. And if you have a question um, about what that means or if there's a certain play you want to go see and you're wondering if it would be um, appropriate, just run it by me first and I'll let you know. Okay. 
Um, I will also throughout the semester provide details of other upcoming local productions. So I will update and announcements um, periodically about once a month, shows that are about to open or are running currently that um, would be appropriate for you to see. And there's actually a lot of theater in Houston. Um, we have um, the most theater seats in North America behind New York City. So there's a lot of theater. There's no excuse not to go see these plays. Um, and additionally, if you are not in the Houston area or you're outside um, of the city, uh, uh, which happens a lot for online courses, um, then you are welcome to see something from a theater closer to you. And I'll give you options like the Unity Theater in Brenham uh, might be closer to your side of town or the Katy Performing and Visual Arts Center out in Katy. And um, these would be perfectly so it doesn't have to be in the Houston uh, uh, metro or the Houston uh, downtown area. It can be in the greater Houston metro area or close to wherever you are. Uh, and again, if you have questions, please come see me and we can talk about it. Um, additionally, the UHD OK Theater produces one play each semester, and you're welcome to see that play for your course credit. Um, it will be here on campus, and then under the UHD OK production schedule, under drama area information, um, you'll see the dates and times, and usually that's later in the semester. For the fall semester, it's usually the end of October or very early November when this play is running. And it only runs for two weeks, so it usually sells out because so many of our students want to go see it because it's convenient for them. Um, and it's usually inexpensive, three to five dollars a ticket. You can buy those tickets in the cashier's office on the third floor um, of the main building. And I will remind you a little bit closer to when this play is uh, going to open, uh, when the tickets go on sale, I will make an announcement and remind you again that you can go do that. So you go and see your two plays and then what do you do? How do you get credit? Well, how you do this, um, fairly easy. After seeing the play, you complete the play analysis form on Blackboard Learn within about a week or so. So don't wait too long. You'll start to tend to forget information. It'll be really hard for you to discuss the play um, in any meaningful manner. So make sure you um, complete this within a week or so of seeing your play. The form, if you go to Play Attendances, the tab here on the left, you'll see Play Attendance 1 and Play Attendance 2. What you'll do is you'll download this document We'll open it up here. Uh, and you will complete all of this information. So you'll fill all of this in. Your name, the name of the play, who wrote the play, the playwright, the genre, the type of play it is. Was it a comedy or a tragedy? Was it a musical? Was it children's theater? Uh, and we'll talk about genres more this semester. Venue, where you saw it, the Alley Theater, the OK Theater, um, uh, Theater Under the Stars, so where you saw the play, and then the date you saw it. And then you'll notice there's five questions, um, and these are all open-ended questions that give you a chance to use the vocabulary and the concepts that we've learned in class to analyze and evaluate what you've seen. So I ask you what your opinion of the acting is and the techniques, um, and back up your opinion with evidence and examples from the play. What was your opinion of the design and design techniques? How did the audience impact the performance? Was there a performer-audience relationship? What did you observe? What was the most successful element of this production and why? So what was really good and uh, why was it really good? And then what was the least successful element and why? And some people shy away from this question. I'm not asking you to, um, to trash the play or talk bad about it. I'm asking for you to evaluate it. So what could be done Better. And this might be hard. If it's a really good production you enjoyed, um, it can be hard to put yourself in those shoes and think, okay, how would I make this better? But I want you to try, give it your best effort, and find something. It could be um, anything from the acting, the design, something in the script, um, to even the parking situation, the layout of the theater. Uh, um, all of these uh, come together to, uh, to form your impression of your experience so you can talk about them as well. All right, if I go back to Blackboard Learn here, um, so once you uh, fill out that document, uh, you will save it on your computer. You will click on Play Attendance 1, and then you will attach it as a submission. So you go to Browse My Computer, you find the particular file that you've just saved, and you go down to the bottom and hit Submit. So it's easy as that. And there's um, one for Play Attendance 1, and then also for your second Play Attendance here. All right, so moving back to the syllabus. Um, so see two plays before the end of the semester, so by the last day of class, which I believe is December 7th, and turn them in on Blackboard Learn. 
Okay, so if we scroll down here, exercises and critical thinking work. Um, you'll be required to participate in this various exercises, homework activities throughout the semester. Um, some of these are guided reading assignments. Some of these are critical thinking work. Um, all are individual, so there's no group work in the online version of this class. And information and specific details, details about these assignments will be given throughout the semester. All assignments will be turned in on Blackboard Learn. So nothing is a hard copy assignment that you have to get to me. All of it's online. Um, tests and exams cannot be made up except in cases of extreme emergency. Um, tests will be over any information from the book or lecture prior to the date of the test. So it's all unitized. So each test um, stands independently from the others. Uh, and then we get to the final exam, which is cumulative over everything. And I'll explain that in a moment. Um, you're responsible for knowing the information on the reading assignments from the text, as well as the information I give you in lecture and any additional read readings that we have as well. And if you have an issue during the test, um, please contact me ASAP so we can resolve it. So if it freezes or it times out early um, or something was marked wrong and you think it should be correct, um, then uh, please contact me ASAP and we'll get that fixed for you. Now if there is an emergency and for some reason you can't uh, complete the test by the deadline, contact me. I'm willing to work with you if you contact me in a reasonable amount of time. So if you miss the test and then you come to me a week later and said, I missed this test, I had an emergency, um, uh, I would be less likely to accommodate you, whereas if you come to me the next day um, or email me the next day or two, um, then I will try to work with you uh, to the best of my ability. Um, important dates this semester, these are all from the academic calendar, um, Labor Day, so you have a three-day weekend here at the top of the semester. On the very last day to drop a class without a grade, so it's as if you never took it. The last day to drop a class with a W, so it just shows that you withdrew from the class, you do not get a grade. And then after that, November 1st on, I have to give you a grade. So if you um, um, decide to stop taking this class, stop attending, or you're doing very poorly, you have to withdraw before October 31st. After that fact, I have to give you a grade whatever you have earned. The Thanksgiving holidays are there, uh, and then also our final exam period as well, which I'll talk about um, in just a moment when we get to that in the syllabus. All right, so the grading for this course, um, notice there's a variety of exercises in, uh, over here. There is the um, self-introduction, which I'll explain in just a moment, and um, that's due this week. There's the online scavenger hunt, also due this first week. There's a playwriting exercise, which will come up during the playwriting unit, and then the design exercise during the design unit. Additionally, you'll have guided reading assignments um, five times throughout the semester. These are online on Blackboard Learn. And then you'll have critical thinking group work, um, uh, not group, I'm sorry, critical thinking work assignments uh, five times throughout the semester, where you'll be responding to questions and thinking critically about the material that's been presented. You have um, one 50-point quiz over the class menagerie, uh, and then you have six tests throughout the semester. Um, so these are at the end of each unit, each of the six units. And then you have the two play attendances, so you have to see two plays for credit. They're 200 points apiece, that's 400 points, that's actually a very large portion of your grade. And then the final exam, which is 250 points. Um, and this should say total 1,700 points. That's just a typo at the moment. Um, your syllabus on Blackboard Learn will be corrected and will say 1,700 points. And then the um, grade ranges 90% of 1,700 points, 80% is a B, 70 is a C, 60 is a D, and then below 60 is an F, a failing grade. So you're accumulating points throughout the semester um, to try to uh, hit your target uh, amount allotment of points here for the um, grade that you want. Moving along, um, attendance. So you might think that attendance in an online class doesn't matter, but you would be wrong. Um, notice that the semester is broken into six units of instruction, and these units are typically one to two, sometimes three weeks long. And these assignment, there are assignments due embedded within each unit, and then a large test um, over the entire unit due at the very end. So this is not the sort of class where you can sit down in one day, view all of the lectures, complete all the assignments, and take the test. You will have to use time management skills, keep up with the work, keep up with the reading, uh, and stay on top of the information. Additionally, view these lectures 
first. So don't attempt the assignments without viewing the lecture. It will not be good. So make sure you, um, you view the lectures first and then you work on the guided reading assignment um, or any exercises that are due and then you take the test at the very end. Um, any student who misses multiple assignments will be referred to the Department Retention Office for assistance and they may contact you um, by phone or by email. Anything you tell them is confidential, um, uh, so they don't tell me any specifics uh, and they will try their best to point you toward opportunities and resources that will get you back on track. So I will reach out to you if it looks like you're struggling. Additionally, the Retention Office might as well um, to help you get over the hump or whatever um, issue you may be dealing with. Um, I do give extra credit throughout the semester. You'll see this on Blackboard Learn under an extra credit opportunities tab. Um, all extra credit is due on Blackboard Learn by the last day of class, which is December 7th. Um, and I will um, mention uh, or, or let you know and announce any new extra credit that becomes available. Academic honesty, so don't cheat in this course. Um, I can be flexible in other areas. I cannot be flexible when it comes to academic honesty. So if I um, suspect or find that you are cheating, um, that includes plagiarism, looking at somebody else's tests, um, working uh, uh, together on assignments that are not group work, um, then you will be penalized with an F for the course. So don't tempt fate. Don't even try to cheat in the course and you'll be okay. All right. Um, UHD's academic honesty policy is in the um, student handbook, um, and so you can link to that and read that. Um, and it includes examples of what um, academic dishonesty might be, such as plagiarism, cheating, passing somebody else's ideas off as your own, um, using devices during a test, such as uh, uh, an, an iPhone or, or um, notes that you're not allowed to use um, to take the test. Students with disabilities, so if you do have a disability that needs accommodation, please contact the um, Office of Disability Services. There's all of their contact information here at the bottom, and they will coordinate um, with me to, uh, uh, to make any accommodations that you're needed. Major declaration after you've completed 30 hours of coursework at Math English 13, a uh, Math 31 and English 1301, you can then declare for your major, which means that you no longer have to wait in the long lines for the advising center. You get to go directly to your major's advisors, who will know more about your degree plan, um, more about the classes that you're taking and the professors that offer them than um, the folks down the academic advising center on the third floor. And it's pretty easy to declare your major. Um, you can. Just just do it through e-services, click My Advising and Major, and then Apply for Major, and you usually get a confirmation of that declaration in four to six weeks. Emergencies and natural disasters, so if there is some sort of emergency, knock on wood, that there's not a hurricane um, or, or an ice day or something like that, um, but if there is some sort of emergency, um, you can uh, update your contact information and the university will text and email you to let you know if it's closed um, or if there's other issues uh, that would prevent learning, basically. Um, uh, the uh, announcements are also posted on this website here um, if we're going to have a weather day, although that affects you guys, online students, a little bit less so. But if there is some sort of emergency and it um, impacts your ability to uh, access Blackboard Learn, let me know and we'll work around it. So this is the actual syllabus portion of the packet, um, and you can see, as I mentioned, that we are broken into units. You have the first week unit here. You've got the um, the acting. I'm sorry, the audience unit here, and then we have the playwriting unit, which moves into the directing unit. After that's the design unit, the acting unit, and then the backstage unit, and then our final review and our final exam. So each of these is unitized, and notice within the unit there are um, due dates, and then at the end of the unit is your test, and so all of that is laid out. So for example, this week you are viewing the course orientation lecture in the course packet. 
Um, you will also be completing your self introduction and replies, and this is due by September 2nd um, at uh, 10 p.m. And you'll be completing the online scavenger hunt. This is also due by September 2nd at 10 p.m. Most of my due dates are at 10 p.m. because um, after that, um, University IT is not available to answer any questions or field any problems that you might be having. Um, and you'll also be expected this week to download the Respondus Lockdown Browser and take all of your tests through Respondus. So for example, if we go back to the first week unit, which is what we're on right now, um, this is the self-introduction we just saw, the online scavenger hunt that we just saw. This is where you can go to download the Respondus Lockdown, and then you can take a practice test to make sure that the Respondus Lockdown is working. So the self-introduction forum, what I'm going to ask you to do is to go to the forum, to create a thread, uh, and then to talk about in an essay uh, about yourself. So if we go back to the instructions here, um, what I've asked you to do is to um, create a sample thread with your name, introduction, in your thread, um, a 100-page essay that introduces yourself to the class. So these will be viewable by other class members. In your introduction, you can tell us about your future plans, your journey to UHD, your hobbies, or whatever. So this is your way to introduce yourself to your fellow students and to me. At the end, put the number of words in parentheses. So you might want to um, go, uh, write this first in a word processing program that has a word count um, option, uh, and then uh, uh, copy and paste it into Blackboard Learn. Um, then I want you to go through and reply to two other students. So choose two other students to reply to. You could ask them a question, introduce yourself, or merely just tell them, you know, welcome to the class. It's up to you. So I just want to make sure that you can go through, see everybody else's introductions, and reply to two other students. And you'll receive a um, grade of 50 points for the assignment. So this is for a grade. Um, these are due by September 2nd, 10 p.m. Here's a video on how to create a new thread if you're confused, so you can go and look at that. And then also here's um, a link to other um, things about Blackboard Learn um, that a student might need to know. So if we go to the self-introduction forum, you'll see there's already mine here. Um, as you complete your introductions, this will populate with other threads, other student introductions. You can just click on the thread. Uh, and then it will take you to the um, the essay, which has to be 100 words. Uh, and then also I've attached a photograph as well. And so you're welcome to attach a photograph, but you do not have to. So that's me and my um, two-year-old son, Thomas, together. Um, and so tell me about yourself, your pets, your hobbies, what you want to do in the future, why you came to UHD or how you got here, et cetera, et cetera. So if we go back to first week, that's your first assignment due on September uh, 2nd by 10 p.m., but you can complete that ahead of time. That's just the deadline. And then the online scavenger hunt. What I ask you to do is to um, download the scavenger hunt, follow the instructions, and then upload, attach, and submit um, your completed assignment. So this is instructions on how to upload an assignment if you're having um, issues with that. Basically, you will come down to the Browse My Computer option, find your document, and then hit Submit. So if we go back, you can um, download the document, input your answers, and then um, submit this on Blackboard Learn. Basically, I'm asking you some open-ended questions about different resources, online resources here on the um, UHD website. So um, go to the academic calendar, answer these questions, go to the class schedule, find the answers to these questions, go to the library's website, find the answers to these questions, the OK in Theater website, the department website of Arts and Humanities, and then the Blackboard website itself. And so all of this is information which would be good for you to know. Uh, and then finally, the Respondus Lockdown Browser. Some of you might be familiar with this if you've taken online classes before. You have to download and use this browser for your tests. It won't allow you to um, leave the page. It won't allow you to look at additional online information. Um, I don't have a way to really stop you from using your notes or using the book, but the test is timed, um, so you should be familiar with that information in advance. 
uh, uh, before attempting to take the test. So if you try to take the test without having read the book or looked at the lectures, it will be very, very difficult for you. So you need to um, download the uh, Respondus Lockdown browser, and there is um, a PDF here with instructions on how to do that. Um, if you're accessing from the Blackboard, Blackboard Learn from a school computer, so if you're taking the test at school, then um, the Respondus um, Lockdown Browser should already be on your um, desktop. It's already on all the school um, uh, computers. So you can take the practice test below uh, using Respondus Lockdown Browser to see how it works. Uh, and the test, the questions are extremely silly. It's very short, um, but it's just a way to see what the test is going to look like and if the browser is going to work on your computer. This practice test is worth um, zero points uh, and, is, and you have to open it in Respondus Lockdown browser. It will not allow you to open it in any other browser. So you would download the browser and then try the practice test and then for all future tests for the course you'll use the Respondus Lockdown browser to take the class, to take the um, test, excuse me. All right, if we jump back um, to the syllabus, you'll notice here's the second week here, September 2nd through 13th, or second unit, excuse me. Um, it lasts about two weeks or so. There are two lectures, one over chapter one, one over chapter two, and it'll be largely like this, a series of slides, and then um, myself down in the corner um, explaining and talking about them. You also have some handouts and videos, all of which I will direct you to during the lecture. So we will either um, talk about them or look at them during the lecture, or um, I will point you to them and say, go read this on your own. Uh, and then you have two assignments, the critical thinking group work due by September 11th, the guided reading assignment due by September 11th, and then your test on September 13th. So there's always something due um, within, embedded within the unit um, before the test is uh, comes due. Now you can, um, what I would suggest you do is to look at the lectures first, um, to look at any handouts and readings and videos, and these are all on Blackboard Learn, so you can access them at any time, um, and then complete the critical thinking group work and the guided reading assignments uh, before finally completing the test. Now if we go to the audience unit, I'm giving you a sneak peek here. Um, we have the lectures and PowerPoints at the very top. And so there are two lectures, chapter one and chapter two. Um, uh, one is an MP4, one is an AVI format. So either, um, uh, they're both the same. So uh, whichever works best with your um, computer setup. And then down here, I've just given you the PowerPoint without the lecture. So if we go to um, chapter one lecture and open it up, um, you'll see here's the beginning. Okay, chapter one. You can hear me talking there. Okay, so you would um, watch through that lecture, work your way through that lecture. Now, if you want to just go look at the PowerPoints for that lecture without me talking, um, maybe as you're studying, then you can do that here as well. Um, so chapter one, chapter two, watch those. Um, if we go back to the audience unit, here are the readings for this unit that you're expected to look at. And we will look at some of them, like typical production process, actually within the lecture. I will mention multi-ethnic theater, and I will um, direct you to read why theater matters on your own. And then additionally, um, we have one video from this unit. Um, some units are more video heavy than the others. Um, this is from the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, and we will watch it within the lecture. But you can also access it here um, on your own if you feel that you want to or you need to. And then if we go back to the audience unit, we have two other um, assignments here. You have your critical thinking group work number one and guided reading number one. So critical thinking group work, if you download and look at the document, is a series of uh, questions with instructions at the top. And these are very open-ended questions um, um, that put you in the um, shoes of uh, uh, the, the people that work in the theater and the situations that you might encounter in the real theater word. So um, go through, for this particular one, there's seven questions, read through them, think about them, and then choose five to submit written short essay, uh, short essay answers to you. So you'll choose five questions and write a short essay, um, answer three to five sentences about that question, and make sure your name um, is on the uh, file and the document name. Uh, and so you would then go to Browse My Computer, find that file, 
and then click submit to um, submit the, the, uh, the file. Go back to the audience unit. Guided reading number one is the other assignment. Um, this is in the format of a test, but you can use this not using the respond as lockdown. Um, so you would just go to begin, and then you would answer um, a series of questions about the unit. In this case, there's nine, so it's usually like 10, um, 15 questions about the reading, um, and you might have to flip through your book to find the correct answer. So do use your text whenever you are um, working on the guided reading assignments. And you can also um, save all the answers and come back later uh, uh, and complete it. Uh, so you don't have to do it all at once like you do the tests. So if you go back to the syllabus, um, that is your first official unit over the audience. Um, you complete all of these steps and then take the test by September 13th at 10 p.m. The test will be available under the audience unit. Um, and then when uh, we come to the next unit, notice it's very similar, more lecture, some videos. Um, we will be talking about the class menagerie, so make sure you have it read by September 16th. So that's the date you need to have it read by, September 16th, um, so that you can um, follow along with the lecture about play analysis and the class menagerie and understand what I'm talking about. Um, there is a quiz, which is due by September 20th. You have an exercise due by the 25th, and then you have some other assignments also due on the 25th. Now, just because assignments are due on the same day doesn't mean you have to complete them all on the same day. So it's up to you to use time management skills to complete these exercises um, uh, before the 25th or, or by the, the due date, but you can certainly do them earlier um, to, to make life easier on yourself. And then you play test, playwright test is due by September 27th. Um, next unit, the unit after that, again, very similar, same sort of things. Um, you'll be looking at lecture, you'll be watching some videos, reading some um, outside assignments, working on guided reading or exercises like we have up here in the design exercise, and then completing a test for each unit. So you have to keep up with the work, make sure you're staying on top of the calendar uh, uh, to do well in this class. Very last week of class is final review, December 2nd through 6th, and then your final exam is December 10th through 16th. So you can log in and complete the exam um, anytime within that um, week or so, that six day span. Um, if you have an A test average, meaning you've taken all six tests and your average is a 90% or above, then you do not have to take the final exam. You will be exempt from that, so that's something to strive for. Um, and after you take the backstage test, so after November 26th, I will um, go through, tally all your grades, and you'll see a column on Blackboard Learn under My Grades that says um, test average, so you know whether or not you're exempt from the final. And if you're exempt from the final, um, rather than uh, averaging a grade out of 1,700 points, I'll just average it out of 1,450 out of the points that you have accumulated because you didn't have to take that 250 point giant final exam. Um, okay, so if you are exempt, you do not have to worry about the final review and you don't have to worry about the final as well. All right, I believe that wraps everything up. Um, Remember, the syllabus is on Blackboard Learn, and I will be updating it periodically if things change. I will make announcements if things change. And if you have any questions about what we're doing this semester or what to do, come back to the syllabus, read through it first um, before coming to ask me, because likely you'll find those answers already been embedded in the syllabus itself. Um, so from this point, um, you should go back to the first week unit and complete the self-introduction. Uh, you should also then work on the online scavenger hunt uh, and download the Respondents Lockdown browser and take the practice test. Um, have a good week and I will um, see you again when you're ready to look at uh, the audience unit.